everyone. Today we're gonna to be working on the last Drawtober prompt. Well, it's not the last one officially, but it's the last one I'm gonna do. This is Ancient Rituals. Um, we're gonna tackle this in mixed media as usual. And yeah, I'll turn you guys over to the voiceover and we'll get started. So let's start off with the story behind this piece. I'm not gonna try and fool anyone. I came up with this idea the same morning I filmed this and just barely made the deadline for this prompt. I hadn't really had time to think about what I wanted to do for it. And I'd seen a post on Facebook about leaving your old pumpkins out for wildlife to eat and I started branching off that. At first I was gonna do some various woodland creatures gathered around a bunch of pumpkins someone had left out for a big, cute, warm looking feast. But then I was like, you know what, no. I'm not really feeling cutesy, it is spooky month and I will not waste it and that's when I had the idea of, okay so these people are leaving pumpkins out for the wildlife but what if something else is taking them? Cue this mis mishmash of various cryptids and voila we have whatever this thing is, I honestly don't know. I was shooting for any- I wasn't shooting for anything in particular, it's just a creature of some sort. So how this ties into ancient rituals is that I imagine the family has been leaving their pumpkins out at the tree line behind their property every year for years, thinking they're feeding the wildlife, and this guy is just strolling up every time to accept their offering, so to speak, as well as the pumpkins of everyone else who does this in the vicinity. Why? What does he do with them? Uh, what would happen if someone caught him in action? I do not know. I'll leave that to your imagination, however grisly it may be. As for the lines for this piece, they are once again transferred from my sketchbook to the computer and then printed onto watercolor paper. However, my main desktop PC that I usually use to clean up my sketches slash line work just randomly died the same weekend I filmed this. Thus, my lines were quite a bit messier since I couldn't use my tablet monitor to fine tune them and was basically just using a mouse for that. So yeah, that was fun, but luckily you can't really tell there's any smudges in the final version, so like, okay, I guess? Now, right off the bat, I did start off and continue to use way too much water throughout this piece, but I'm going to give myself a break here. This is one of the rare instances in which I've attempted an actual watercolor background instead of just a simple gradient or whatnot. I actually wanted to put in some extra effort with this one just to set the mood for the environment this guy likes to operate in, and just kind of tell a little story with this piece. I wanted to go for a storybook, uh, storybook vibe with this, so I chose to work primarily with soft blues and purples and reds to give it a dreamy look in spite of the nightmarish subject. I feel like somehow I'd forgotten some of the watercolor techniques I'd been using. I don't know why or how that happened, but it happened, so I spent pretty much the whole time I was working on the foreground just trying to remind myself what has worked for me in the past and kind of struggling to get the colors and blending to work for me. The right hand bush in particular gave me a lot of trouble because I just used so much water on it and I kept trying to cover up the weird texture that I had going on there which I think I kind of succeeded in the end, I'll let you decide.
One thing I will say that I'm really proud of with this piece is that I did do the vast majority of it in watercolor. Lately I've been feeling like I was getting a little lazy with my watercolor work because I knew I was just going to go over it and patch it up with other media afterwards. But with this, I don't know, I really got sucked into just the painting process and really tried to make the watercolor take front and center here. I'm really glad I challenged myself like this even though it was unintentional and I was genuinely just having fun using the paints. I did end up using some colored pencils later to reinforce some of the lines and shading, as well as a little bit of uh, gel pen, but that was about it. I didn't feel like it needed anything else since I did so much of the detailing with just watercolor. One thing I found myself wanting to experiment with during this piece, especially in the monster himself, was laying down a more neutral color to get in some shading and then going over that with a different, more colorful wash to see if the more colorful wash would retain the shading underneath. I think it did work, especially on the bits where I added that reddish flesh tone to his shoulders and other parts of his body. Definitely something to experiment with more in the future. For the background of this piece, I was definitely heavily inspired by Toshi Yoshida's Sacred Grove piece. I love the line work in his pieces and I've been wanting to study it more and incorporate it into my own style. One of the reasons I rarely do backgrounds these days is because I don't really have a style for them anymore. Back in the day when I was overloading myself with commissions and working primarily digitally, my background style was more painterly and kind of conceptual I guess is the right word for it. I was always studying the major concept artists of the time and trying to learn how to do more realistic leaning settings, but honestly, I just didn't really enjoy it and I still don't and I find myself consistently being taken in by backgrounds that incorporate line art and stylized shapes. Besides Toshi Yoshida, I'd like to study the background art of Gravity Falls and I also love how Cosimo Galuzzi, I hope I'm saying that right, approaches his backgrounds. Now that I've done a big experiment with this piece, I'm hoping I'll be more confident adding backgrounds to future traditional pieces and put, putting more time and effort into refining my own background style. Who knows, maybe I'll find a unique way to combine the new and the old. Once again, I'm just wanting to focus on drawing things that speak to my personal aesthetics instead of crafting something for other people and so far I feel like I've made a lot of headway in that area. It kind of feels like starting completely from scratch but I'm actually good with that. I think there's a lot of room for growth here and I'm looking forward to seeing what I create with all the style experimentation. Thank you. 
Now that we're nearing the end of this piece and wrapping up October, I imagine you're wondering what we're going to tackle next month. Well, I think for the rest of the year, I'd like to try and steer away from art challenges and just do my own thing. I'd like to do some pieces that have to do with my personal characters and head worlds and whatnot, and whatnot instead of just random creatures. We'll see how that goes. I definitely want to try showing you guys my process for creature designs and spending some more time filling out our channel specific sketchbook. So yeah, we'll see where these last two months of the year lead us. Anyways, I'll leave you all to enjoy the rest of the video without me talking. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it so much. Thank you to those of you who tune in every week. I hope you all have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.